very good morning participants and welcome to the fifth day on the fdp on additive manufacturing we have our resource person with us today i am taking the pleasure of introducing mr prabahar annamalai ceo of petroform kaimbatur i am also proud uh, to introduce yet another alumni of psc college of technology he has graduated from psc college of technology from the department of production engineering he did his post graduate in uh, diploma in plastics engineering from central institute of plastics uh, uh, plastics engineering and technology chennai he did his diploma in marketing management uh, his local experiences is uh, about uh, 28 plus years in cad cam cae industrial design reverse engineering and additive manufacturing presently he is developing new technology equipment with uh, global partnership with companies in the areas of 3d scanning 3d printing and cnc machines the core areas of interest are mind to market encompassing concept design engineering design tool die design prototyping modern manufacturing and inspection 3d scanning 3d printing and digital manufacturing processes services in areas of additive manufacturing in medical devices implant prosthetics etc he has uh, he, he is a certified professional engineer in sls lom 3d inkjet printing selective laser melting cnc systems 3d scanning and he has visited many countries on business like south korea singapore thailand malaysia sri lanka germany usa canada israel netherlands luxembourg italy france austria switzerland hong kong china and middle east countries uh, for business in the areas of cad cam cae selective laser sintering multi jet modeling sla lom reverse engineering subtractive prototyping uh, robotics and factory automation these are the fields uh, and uh, reasons why he has visited all these countries presently he is ceo of vectorform kaimatur he is technical advisor to leading companies in kaimatur chennai and also board of studies member of for leading institutes institutes in india on new product development cad cam cae 3d scanning 3d printing and digital manufacturing he is blessed with a daughter and happily married to uh, maya sir we are happy to have uh, you with us on this session uh, on recent advancements in additive manufacturing technologies may i now hand over the reign to you sir the forum is yours Sir, I think you can. Uh, you are not audible, sir. Sir, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, no. Not okay. Ah, uh, yes, sir. You are audible now. Okay. Good morning to all the participants. Uh, uh, I'm very happy to uh, you know share uh, today my time with you. I'll be uh, probably taking about sixty plus minutes on uh, sharing my uh, experience and uh, some insights on the additive manufacturing technology. and a few slides about like uh, i mean in addition to what uh, my introduction at the beginning is what like to share some of the slides about us and our company so that you know as a little bit better so i will start now yeah so who am i actually what is vectorform the company that i represent and uh, why additive manufacturing i mean if there is a need for additive manufacturing felt in the past in many decades ago then what's the reason and characteristic of am with the legacy uh, what are the different uh, specific characteristic with additive manufacturing we saw with the other uh, current existing manufacturing process in the market and divisions of am today and i will also be covering on the trends defining am of tomorrow and ending up with question and answer session and uh, uh, though i mean the uh, the title that has been given to me is actually very vast in nature i try to do my whatever that i could do justice today uh, to explain on this topic as much as possible so please bear with me uh, because in uh, 60 minutes time it's very difficult to cover everything about the subject which actually it's a, a few days of uh, i don't know giving uh, you know uh, the insight about trends uh, so i will try to do whatever i can today thank you and uh, moving on 
So just quickly recall that I'm a, a graduate from PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore, and I did my postgrad diploma in plastic engineering, and also did my postgrad diploma in marketing manager and marketing management, and also the founder member member of Vector Farm today. And um, my experience, because since like uh, I started uh, my career after uh, graduation, that uh, our my interest was core interest was in uh, design and also in uh, the latest technology, uh, which is like uh, surrounding uh, surrounding the three D you know modeling and so on. So uh, I invariably like uh, we founded this company like somewhere in nineteen ninety eight. And we started uh, uh, representing some companies in 3D design technologies. And thereafter, we were close in observation with uh, additive manufacturing. In those days, it's not been additive manufacturing, used to be called basically rapid prototyping. Uh, then the, the slowly the jargons changed. It was rapid tooling and rapid manufacturing. And somewhere in the year 2000 later, then the new word came up like additive manufacturing. So uh, myself personally, I had been associated with various companies that were actually part of this uh, additive manufacturing legacy. So during this time that I had uh, visited various countries and seen many of these companies manufacturing this AM system globally. So be it in America, be it in Israel, be it in you know other countries like Korea, or Germany, and China, and so on. So I visited many of the manufacturing companies are making these machines. And during this time, I learned with those experts who are in this business about the trend in the market for last decade, last two decades, and I'm going to share some of them. So I also like visit various, uh, you know, the, some of these uh, trade fair, which are globally uh, very much representing these, uh, you know, uh, modern trend in manufacturing. Some of them you may already know, like it's called the Hanover Match Day or CBIT or the TCT show or the Euromold show or the Farm Next. So these shows like where the many of the new technology normally uh, get exhibited and then are introduced in the beginning and thereafter it gets into the uh, industries and the institutions thereafter. So uh, these uh, uh, these exhibitions normally give a very big insight about what's going to come. Yeah. So what we do like in Vectorform. So Vectorform is basically a design engineering and prototyping service and manufacturing company. We currently operate in southern part of India and our day to day working like involves like CAD CA system, CAM CNC machine, reverse engineering 3D scanners, RFE machines, and plastics, metal, ceramics, and medical modeling system. In our own in house, like we have about more than 10 plus 3D scanners and 10 plus 3D printers, uh, including metal printer. And we also have the uh, other allied uh, machines like CNC and supporting machines and software, so on. So our basic goal in the beginning was to bring technology from outside of India. Uh, so basically, I call this a technology domain because one thing that missing like about two and a half decades ago that I saw was even in Coimbatore, I remember uh, people are using the drafting boards and they were making the drawings like in the paper in right? big A1 uh, uh, drafting boards. So we were uh, feeling that that could be a big change uh, due to the 3D modeling was early stage of, uh, I would say, nation stage of the adaptation in the market. So in the other country, like in Germany or in US, it was very quickly adopted. So we brought in some few companies representing 3D modeling software. Then we started like, uh, you know, uh, helping companies in India, especially in southern part of India, to adopt this technology for speeding, uh, speeding up the product development uh, growth. So this we call as a technology and people thing. So we um, brought the technology and we also brought the know-how to the industry. So therefore, some of the companies here, like uh, I would say, like starting from uh, companies like LMW, LG, Roots, Precol, in you know Coimbatore, and other companies like in Ashok Leyland. I mean, you can name it. Many of the big companies started working this technology. We're part of this journey in the beginning, where we brought in the 3D CAD to them. So while the 3D CAD started becoming popular, was the uh, also the necessity for uh, the other application of 3D CAD models. So during those times, uh, the rapid prototyping used to be called. There not too many players in the market. I am just talking about 1990s, very few technologies which were in place. And then uh, we were also seeing the trend that moving towards how to use the 3D modeling data into other allied activity like manufacturing. So I will just cover some slides on that. So when CAD came started, the core of the foundation was the 3D CAD model. And of course, that all of you probably know that it's also used in the CNC area, which I'm not going to discuss today. And also in the analysis area, like that is called the finite element analysis or finite element you know, engineering. Uh, so it's another area where the 3D model was uh, predominantly used for enhancing the product development. During the late 1990s and early 2000 was the, you know, really, I would say the 
proliferation of, proliferation of additive manufacturing technology where the large OEM started adopting this technology for the benefit of a faster product development. I mean, it would be like normally the aerospace and automotive industry, uh, which were the early adopter of this technology in the global scenario. And also there was a, a feeling of need for these 3D data in a very uh, hurried and uh, faster way. So the parallelly also the other industry that started developing the global market and technology was the 3D scanning. Uh, so because the uh, need for 3D models were not always uh, met with uh, developing from scratch. So there were also parallel technology like 3D scanners, which uh, were developed quickly at the time where you can grab a physical object into 3D CAD data using the scanners and the same can be also output to the AM machines. And eventually it also led to another area of uh, application of 3D model data, which is called the uh, computer data inspection or computer data verification or computer data inspection that is actually like computer testing. So where the 3D model was superimposed to the actual component then also compared for the functioning of the part vis-a-vis -vis the original CAD intent. I mean, these are some of the, I would say the uh, overall view. And uh, so as a vector form, what all we've done in the past, just to give a brief, uh, we had uh, done a few projects uh, in which are very, very uh, valuable to share with you. But of course, we've done thousands of projects, uh, I mean, for various clients, but some projects like uh, Close to Our Heart, which we would like to share with you, that is one of the things that we did is like uh, in Koyamathur, we use the 3D scanning and 3D, uh, I wouldn't say additive manufacturing, the basics of additive manufacturing uh, to make this kind of, a, you know, a quicker turnaround for a product like this. Uh, it's in Isha Ashram where we made the scanning of the bull and then we converted into layer technology. And we did uh, some, you know, tweak around to convert this into a real true model. It was not manufactured conventionally, unconventionally uh, using the AM techniques. We also did another work, you can see also in the picture that's very, very uh, famous uh, today. It's called the Adiyogi Engineering, where we also similarly used the AM techniques to manufacture this. I mean, in fact, some of you interested, maybe after this uh, today's uh, seminar and this uh, webinar that we could uh, let us share with you how we had uh, gone about making this thing. Uh, I mean, I would say one of the very uh, prominent uh, in Koyamathur, uh, such kind of uh, thing using AI technologies. So we made two of them. One was 21 feet uh, statue, which was done using a similar technique. The other one was about 112 feet, which is there right now in Koyamato. And uh, the 21 feet is being produced and sent all over the country across in India and also globally. This one is in America now. And the, you would have seen, some of you would have, would have said this ashram probably would have seen this uh, sculpture. This is actually some of the works that where we were the design partner with this uh, Isha people, Isha team. And we also done in the real uh, true engineering where the uh, the Formula 3 car is produced by one of the very popular company in Koyamato, where we had uh, brought in, uh, um, uh, it's actually very uh, different, very unique because this is not a normal Formula 3 car. It has got uh, two seats if you see in the later uh, slides. So we had scanned and modeled and then we Indianized it or would say locally, you know, made it like for adaptation in India. And this car has got two seats, one for the learner and one for the driver, I mean, one for the uh, trainer. So the two people at the same time using this car uh, for learning and teaching. So it's one of the very uh, famous company in Koyamathur, which is manufacturing and selling in the market. And we were the company that actually was a design partner in making this possible. Okay. So why AM? So generally the people in the mind of when you just say AM that they think anything is possible like a magic. I mean, that's a typically comes in one's mind. Okay, we can manufacture anything quickly and we can also replicate sometimes even the human, you know, uh, cloning. It's actually like you can make organs and so on. And people have different perception about AM. You know, if you talk to a normal a general people, I mean, they would imagine themselves like that. But let's go like, you know, what actually was uh, in the past that uh, made technology so possible and so visible and so, you know, proliferating to the common man. So if you look at the industrial revolution in the past during the 19, you know, 20s or 19th century, the beginning, when the steam engine was invented, uh, then, then the factories came, then the railways came, then the city formed, and then therefore the, the civilization spread very, very fast. This was actually in the 19th century, the beginning. And later in the 20th century, I would say like in the, maybe the later than I would say 1890s and so on when the internet was uh, brought in. And then there is also the huge, uh, you can see that today the uh, proliferation of internet in everybody's home and everybody's uh, hand and also in the offices and corporates and everywhere. I mean, we can imagine how the internet is like actually changing the way of life for the uh, general public, right? 
the similar optimism is also there in the current in the am uh, am um, area because what additive manufacturing is meant for various uh, applications like for example in plastics in metal casting in metal manufacturing 3d printing of homes bio 3d printers ceramics on the list is very endless because uh, uh, am started like uh, i would i wouldn't think that anybody would imagine that this will reach out to so many possibilities but today the current uh, am adaptation in different domain actually makes one to excel that uh, am uh, can be the replacement for the conventional manufacturing but I, I wouldn't advocate that, but then I will actually add some slide to like support like what I'm going to say about the trends in AM and it's the current trend and the future going forward. Yeah, so what is additive manufacturing? So as for the ASTM definition, the process of joining metals, right? Uh, making an object, usually from the 3D CAD model, layer by layer, that's a key thing here because in the other method, we're not making by layer by layer because this is actually the normal, the other option is the subtractive manufacturing, where we take a block of material and start milling or uh, doing turning or any other operation to bring it to the CAD uh, shape. But in the case of AM, we use a 3D model and slice it, and then layer by layer, we uh, bring it to a, you know, the CAD shape uh, in any material, right? This is the basic of the additive manufacturing definition by ASTM. And why AM? So what is the reason for AM? So it's though it's opposite of subtractive manufacturing, uh, there were like uh, many of you may have heard this uh, design for manufacturing used to be one of the uh, colloquial term used in the industries like because when one designs that we have taken to care about the product design that uh, they are you not actually going beyond the possibilities of manufacturing so the design itself is not able to manufacture so there is to be complained about that so design for manufacturing was a key word used in the industry uh, to make sure the tooling is actually proper and the component and so on but with am actually what happens is that actually liberating the these rules are the possibilities of making complex shapes compared to the conventional manufacturing. They've broken the barrier of the design. So there are no restrictions are designed for manufacturing using this AM. And it's also quicker than the conventional process. Because the conventional process, we normally have a, a you know the reason to make the intermediate tooling and other things, dies and all that, to get into the component, unless we uh, do it by hand, or whatever, like you know. And the other option is like, you know, you can have the lattice and lattice and lighter structure possible using AM because uh, uh, if you want to make a very uh, big large part that needs to be very heavy or even the parts that are actually not required to be heavy, there is no way because we cannot make it otherwise conventional uh, manufacturing process. AM is also like in, in one way, it's also mimicking nature because nature is always like, uh, you know, typically start with one cell, then multiply the cell. Then it forms into a, a you know kind of a plant or a organized or, I mean any organic shape and therefore the life comes into play. So AM is similar to that. Like it started with a single dot and then it goes on to make a real a big component in various maybe home or uh, ceramic or metal or anything, and it's mimicking nature. The other one is like you know AM also gives option to the manufacturer like you know take an order and then make it according to the client needs rather than you know first you make it and then uh, stock it and then sell it. So that used to be the traditional way of uh, conventional way of uh, the company's work. But with the AM, what happens that you can have it online the model and then somebody orders to you then at the demand and the on the way the customer wants it, customize it and you can go into manufacturing. So in essence, it's like anywhere, anytime, anything by anyone kind of a model of business, right? So the basic foundation of basic blocks of AM started with the first, the very first uh, what Mr. Charles Hull, uh, who actually the founder of additive manufacturing or those days could call the uh, rapid prototyping or the stereolithography. So he was a key man in bringing the AM into the market somewhere in 1994, it was an accidental discovery of uh, you know curing the polymer by um, laser and uh, uh, then he found the method of uh, making that sure that uh, the useful for the industry and then the stereolithography came into play and finally also in the other other technology like slf selective laser centering was uh, developed in university of austin texas uh, where uh, uh, some of the inventors actually developed this process uh, fusion deposition modeling was brought by scott crumb again in america he brought the uh, technology into the market during the late 1980s and LOM was one of the other uh, basic foundation system which currently is there in some form but not very predominantly uh, direct metal laser manufacturing was invented by or discovered by the uh, the german uh, company uas and that became the basics for 
plastics and later into metal and all the very successful company in the world today where they predominantly dominate the metal manufacturing market i mean using this technology and 3d printing lately came in uh, because of the uh, you may be aware that uh, some of the uh, uh, pvc based uh, or the vinyl based 3d printing technology were into play and then the inks were the epoxy and so on then the uh, acrylics came in and uh, thereafter it led to the development of uh, uh, 3d printers uh, using uh, this kind of liquid based material or powder based materials where the binders are used to uh, you know kind of uh, join them together then lens is another technology which is very early in the, uh, the part of the process a laser engineered lens shaping is a lens process especially used in the aerospace industry and also then you lately saw that uh, you know the electron beam melting uh, using electron beam how one could make a very high temperature metals like titanium were formed into shapes and in a vacuum condition uh, selective laser melt melting is also another another technology in metal application where the uh, basic uh, powder bed fusion is a technology is adopted uh, to use and uh, use as laser to melt the powder and form the metal objects all right so next slide so aim is also not limited to the basic foundation you know technology it's also leading to very new technologies today i mean it's like you look at the current uh, the market uh, trend it's actually like a lot of new technology um, uh, possibly i would say um, uh, very novel in uh, ideas and also very uh, kind of uh, changing the way the aim technology is so the clip is a process where you would have seen the recently carbon 3d printer where the speed of 3d printing is like more than 200 millimeter per hour and then uh, that actually kind of uh, uh, changing the the velocity of 3d printing and nanoparticle jetting is another company from israel actually who are actually trying to make uh, very fine high accurate parts at the high speed mold jet technology which is now recently launched then mcp multi layer concurrent printing gel dispensing printing technique for making larger objects are about 10 meter and so on that it can be used for making a larger objects uh, in uh, gel based u curing and also like uh, for uh, medical uh, there are also like for printing human organs the technology called free form reversible embedding of suspension hydrogel like hydroxyapatite and so on that the pd print and this yet another technology is like recently popular you know it's like called the hybrid am what is the hybrid am it's a combination of subtractive and additive manufacturing to make a final parts or the tooling in fact i'm going to just make some slides uh, shown to you later for my presentation okay yeah so before actually really uh, moving on to the uh, am in detail i would like to make this disclaimer today so given time that i in a portion not to be able to cover everything that latest trends in the market because you need a few days of time to talk about it but what my today my uh, uh, focus is going to be uh, uh, really bending the thought towards the uh, man am in the indian scenario because uh, some of the technology like for example i would say uh, let's say like uh, uh, some technology which are uh, possibly globally like electric car you take it like electric car uh, was uh, uh, in the market in even 1970s and 1980s but only like the reason was that we see the commercialization of these vehicles and especially it's happening in the developed markets like america and europe but you don't see them in india so much quickly but take some time to adopt in india the reason being all that you know like you know it's our uh, uh, economy of model the financial affordability and uh, local uh, you know support system networking of uh, support system and all that takes a big difference in adopting this technology so my uh, focus will be on the am which are like latest which are going to make an impact on the indian scenario so some of the technology i will be talking about these uh, today in my presentation focusing on them all right so the characteristic of am is basically that you need the cad model because without the cad model you cannot start anywhere in am because that's the basic foundation or the basic founding i mean the fundamental you know building block of am and after the design has been made in cad of course the design in cad has got again today like a different school of thoughts because the conventional cad is actually basically works on uh, the solid geometry csg surface modeling and so on but in the uh, case of we need a, in am we need a mesh modeling uh, because the stm file is typically the the one of the uh, basic uh, file format that being used but with the current latest uh, you know uh, change in the marketplace uh, many of the cad vendors like who are making the katia solidworks uh, proe or unigraphics and so on they are all trying to also adopt some of the techniques that can actually help uh, creating the 
CAD models that are easily adoptable for AM techniques, uh, AM manufacturing. So that's something is actually happening a change. I'm going to cover some of the slides on that area about the software side of it. So once the CAD is ready, let's say it's either made in the conventional CAD or the AM CAD, like um, which are actually uh, predominantly used by some lattice structure. These CAD models are converted to layered program, like means that it's sliced according to the slice thickness on a, you know different machines, and then this is actually layered program is sent by a means of you can say by uh, any protocols either wireless or by wired mechanism so the AM machine the AM machine has got uh, these uh, programs and AM machine also have got their own control boards where like cnc machines like you must have heard that uh, the siemens fanuc and you know all this uh, makino and so on the different kind of controllers you also have uh, controllers in the AM machines which are uh, proprietary to the machine manufacturer however these CAD software, which are uh, converting the layered program, are understandable to the AM machine control boards, and therefore the AM machine take that code. Uh, it could be like G code or any other codes. And this layered program is manufactured by the machine in different materials. So I will also talk about the materials later on. And subsequently, after the machine has made these parts, the AM parts, then you have the unloading of the part, unloading of the material, unloading of the part, and so on. Therefore. And after that, we have another, uh, you know, very important thing is the post-processing of these parts. These are not the parts that are typically uh, uh, straight because uh, these parts need to be post-processed for whatsoever reason. For example, removing the support or, uh, for example, uh, uh, to surface treatment or uh, removing the porosity and support, I mean, removal and so on. So the post-processing became a part of the AM process. Lastly, but not the least, uh, the quality of the parts that are made by AM is very, very important because uh, conventional also that we have this uh, quality control where we use a coordinate machine machine or 3D scanners to validate how the parts have come out of the machines. Though we might be using computer control machines, but still there is a lack of possibility that uh, the parts can go wrong. So even the AM, there are quality checking, either uh, like, you know, uh, real time quality checking or the post process part quality checking happens. Validation of the parts is very important before accepting the part for the, you know, uh, like assembly or any other application later on. Yeah. So the material. So the material basically like in AM that we use, uh, not the conventional material, because conventionally that we have the uh, ingots and so on, the blocks, and then we conventionally machine it. But in the case of AM, it's got a specific character, like in the sense that it can be available in a wire format, a filament format, a liquid format, a powder format. So these are the basic uh, format of different material form. And again, in powder, you can say what kind of micron size, whether it's a 20 micron, 55 micron, 100 micron, and uh, fine powder, coarse powder, all those things. And in wire also, you have different types of wires. Uh, the material wire, the wire, like I would say stainless steel, uh, titanium, and then the wire diameter, how much diameter the wire is. And the filament, again, different types of filament. You have the PLA, you have the ABS, then you have the uh, uh, polycarbonate and then you have the PEG and so on and liquid again you have the acrylates epoxy and different types of liquid based material available for 3d printing or the AM technology okay these are the basic uh, fundamental forms the material available to the AM machines the system build system build is about the having the technology either based on laser or electron beam or plasma, inkjet or filament based, you know, system built based on the machine. So the machine could be like a, a simple machine that's used on the desktop or like hobby machines or it can be industrial machines or it can be like a temperature control to work only in a particular, you know, specific conditions. So it depends on the system build. And also the character of the AM machine can be divided also based on the end use. It means whether it's for consumer, it's for aerospace or it's for medical or for industrial. So depending on the application of the uh, system, it also like divides into the uh, different characters, the division of the machines. Okay, then lastly then again, like you know, we want the AM to have the surface finish, hardness, porosity, etc. Basically divides these AM system in uh, serious applications. Like for a hobby use, you don't worry about all this thing. But for a serious aerospace application, one would worry about the porosity, the homogeneity of the you know material built, uh, the stress strain on the parts and so on. So the force finishing is very important in some of the characters. So therefore, the AI machines can be divided on based on these kind of characters of the AM technology. Okay. So the trends in AM. Okay. What are the different trends in AM and which way to go? Right. I mean, like it's our question that today everyone will ask. Like, okay, there are so many machines, so many technology, 
uh, so much today that's uh, so much divided and the uh, aim technology which way to go what are the trends today which i'm going to talk about in a uh, few slides next so before that i would like to again reiterate that you know as i said to you in the beginning uh, there are machines available in the hobby use or i would say the desktop use where there is a development happening in that particular market as well and there is a mid market where is especially called the uh, small uh, industrial machines where it's adopted by various companies which are also having a different trend uh, that's happening in that market and there's also another market which is a high end market called the metal 3d building where is also like a lot of development happening in that market so what is so relevant for the indian context so where is the need for india to adopt this am so it is quickly proliferate to every you know level in, in indian scenario because one of the basic thing is the driving is out of so it's called the return on investment when any am machine is purchased normally people worry about this technology actually get obsolete very quickly just like your mobile phone because every year new technology come in the old technology become obsolete so how do we take back the money on the investment on am this has become a question for uh, many of the uh, industrial or the corporates to think about so therefore in india like if you look at the past the proliferation of am happened only with the mainly in the educational institutions maybe some of you represent today in this in this webinar or else you know like in uh, uh, in the service bureaus because service bureaus where the big companies normally outsource the work to them therefore they don't worry about investment am rather than just outsource the work and get the job done this is the model in the past but in the recent the current scenario because even that takes some time and there is a uh, data going back and forth between the oem to the service bureau people are worried about the confidentiality of the information so they tried to address this by adopting technology which are much uh, friendly in investment and also what is the trend that can actually uh, protect their investment for a longer time right so i'm going to talk about those kind of techniques where there's a longer uh, you know uh, um, endurance of this technology also the roi is quicker for indian scenario okay so the division is am as i said before it's uh, there is a basic uh, the thing is the hobby am system which are now you see in the uh, amazons and in you can see the chinese make a lot of these machines which are basically uh, price wise very very cheap they are available for even less than 1000 dollars and uh, one could buy at home or buy in institute and uh, you know can use it for hobby the next one is a slightly above the hobby machines it's called the sme or the design studio am system which are slightly pricey maybe about uh, 5000 us dollars to way up to about 25000 us dollars which are not like uh, the hobby machine because hobby machine most of the times like they fail very quickly and you need to attend to it very often and that actually is not good for the uh, small and medium engineering enterprises or the design studio because when they do a serious job they like to see the system that produces a part without a failure and this is another segment where there is a growth of uh, you know am happening uh, presently in the market i i as i said to you like it's a, anywhere the price about 5000 us dollars to about 25000 us dollars the thirdly then there is a big a chunk of market that's happening globally now uh, is application specific ready manufacturing i would take two examples uh, one example is uh, because which i am closely associated with is uh, something called the the jewelry market because in india per se like uh, when, uh, way back in year 2000 and so on when i was uh, 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 you know advocating this ready manufacturing to the jewelry manufacturer there was a resistance in jewelry manufacturing because jewelry manufacturing used to be the conventional way of manufacturing there will be like uh, curry guards who are called the artisans who normally use a hand to make the jewelry they typically work with the you know tools that are hand tools and then they convert the wax into jewelry and it was happening like conventional way but then uh, in the year 2000 people adopted the cad in the jewelry industry they brought a lot of the cad designs but they're not able to convert into real manufacturing and there were like a demand for the machines which were really only doing like a magic for jewelry manufacturing and some of the uh, big am companies globally i would uh, think some of them uh, actually they focus on this particular segment and they made machines specifically for jewelry like for example like very fine 3d printing like which are in micron it is also like uh, castable resins which can be converted from like a wax like from plastics to metal directly without leaving any carbon residue these were some of the you know pitfalls in the normal conventional am and then some of these companies identified early on and then they made that am machine specific to jewelry industry this is one of them the second one i would say about the medical side of it in the medical industry also there was a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, not many too many company focused on medical but then subsequently the medical became one of the key uh, am adaptation like for example 
I would think about dental because we also have a machine which are like making dental parts in our company. Like for a dental implants, when they make again like jewelry, they were making conventionally by hand uh, by the dental labs or using CNC machines. The CNC machine were very very time taking and also it got a lot of the you know complex like programming in the tool in five axis and feeding the machine block and so on and then the tool wire then commercial tool and the people had learned about the uh, cam program so on the dental labs are not like really adopting all this thing very quickly so the additive manifest system when they came in dental it also took uh, the market by storm means like uh, many other dental labs today having this AI machine though it's very expensive but then they adopt this technology quickly and that's actually becoming now the uh, one of the ways to make uh, parts for the medical industry implants and so on I mean, not only dental, also in the orthopedic, also in the neural, and also in other other uh, application of medical. I would cover some of them later in my slides. Okay. Fourthly is the industrial AM, where you know, like an automobile industry, the aerospace industry, which are tool and die making industry, which are fighting the AM uh, to be very you know useful, and they invest on such a large uh, amount of capital investment. They're able to take the returns on these machines uh, by making parts, which otherwise earlier were not able to release quickly. Also, if you see the trend today, because as I said before, for the uh, stock to sell to, you know, you make to order kind of business model. So many of the companies trying to think that AM could kind of help them in achieving that goal, right? And also the AM system with the in-situ monitoring today is coming actually one of the key uh, for research on the or research interested. This is one area where the people are trying to see like if there's any defect coming up in AM system, if you can identify early on while the part is being built, we can eliminate that. So what are the part come out of the machine? There is no need to do the quality control. We can straight away accept the part and then uh, get into the assembly or thereafter for any application, right? So that's actually one area where there is a, a, a significant amount of investment is made, especially for aerospace and also for medical, where these AM system are classified and with along with uh, direct, uh, you know, uh, quality control in real time, and they are able to pick, make the parts. Okay. The so lastly, automated AM production forms, like which are like unattended where robots are being used so to operate the machine to retickle the material to unload the part and you know you are able to produce in like large quantity like in thousands of parts uh, like conventional manufacturing this is becoming significantly you know today uh, used in many of the developed countries where they're trying to replace the commercial manufacturing using this kind of automated am production forms so these are basic division of am i'm just based on the application of the AM system and divided here of course, in based on technology, there are different divisions. I mean, this is actually currently I'm just mentioning this to you uh, just to ensure that you're able to understand the need of it in respect to the Indian context. OK, so the reason advancement. So one of the key factor, I would say the reason for the AM uh, not uh, able to leverage the best of its uh, character is one of the thing was the design because design was a uh, we're using conventional CAD software and we're designing using that. And then it was actually not leveraging the AM characteristic, like making the lightweight structure or the, uh, I would say, uh, you don't have to design the way, you know, conventionally design it. So the design for additive management software is one of the area where there's a large number of investment has been made uh, globally. I mean, not only uh, in India, also there are some investment being made, also globally, there are a lot of investment being, being made because these software don't look like the conventional software, like uh, typically that what you see in uh, uh, SolidWorks or in, in Unigraphics or in, uh, pro, I mean, pro and so on. These software functions very differently. I mean, because basically we use a mesh model in the AM process. So they work on the mesh modeling techniques rather than the CSG or surface geometry and so on. So they work on the mesh modeling or the voxel modeling. Uh, today I would say voxel is another technique where the AM is able to leverage the CAD technique. And the other area where uh, people are investing money is the high speed throughput, high speed, high throughput machines. Means we don't want to wait uh, for like earlier days, like, you know, we used to wait for a few days to get the part out of the machine. But today people want, like, I want it like next hour, uh, today evening, or like I load it today night, tomorrow morning, I need the part. Something like that kind of a thought is going on in uh, some of the, you know, uh, uh, investors' mind. So there are high speed, high throughput machines which are being focused now. So I will be touching upon, but I think some other thing I highlighted here today, where I'm going to like focus my uh, rest of my speech on this. Yeah. And multicolored multi-material 3D printing is another area where I, I, I really uh, have my own um, reservations about the use of multicolor. Of course, uh, there are uh, industry like a fancy, uh, like a souvenir or memorabilia people are making for the, their own thing where the multicolor is also in the FEM area, they're using it, multicolor 3D printing. 
and that actually got some uh, companies to focus upon with the color 3d printing and multi metal 3d printing for some specific applications like uh, in nuclear in battery and so on where they using multi metal 3d printing combining two materials like stainless steel copper together and so on where there also a lot of investment is happening and also the large format machine see one of the very uh, uh, big issue in am growth is that of course we can make smaller parts or medium parts but large part let's say 10 meter parts or about 10 meter so we do we still depend upon the conventional manufacturing yes in the past was the case but the current uh, uh, investment happening in large form machines about 10 meter and so on uh, like you also would have seen uh, some of the building 3d printer like for building homes and so on some of the 3d printers which can build even the homes so there are also like some of the investment happening in large format machines okay the next one which i highlighted here medically suited machines like for example which can be used like a implant or a prosthetic and so on uh, where it actually the benefits are very quick for the uh, i would say the the investor for the machine and a medically suited machines like for example titanium cobalt chromium and different materials or even plastics these parts which can be straight away adopted for manufacturing and it can be also um, used by the customer without affecting anything like ft certificate so on the another one i highlighted here is the production and tooling metal ai machines because uh, this is area where the conventional thing takes long time like for example sometime even more than uh, i would say uh, like 5 weeks or even 3 uh, months sometime so where is a big need for making the production tooling metal ai machines and there's a lot of investment going on and this is one of the very high growth area currently in the market because uh tooling is also requires a lot of skill i mean in terms of uh, the tooling a person uh, so one has to design the tooling then he has to make the tooling with the high precision and the tooling if anything problem then the part will also have a problem so tool must be done in very care, high care and tooling is very very highly required with a lot of expertise uh, in terms of uh, designing the methodic then splitting the tool i mean for the geometry whether it's a plastic or it's for metal or it's for any other ceramics or glass so the production tooling is also very very critical in the growth of metal a lot of companies investing on this area okay another interesting thing is the uh, hybrid am so why hybrid am because uh, subtractive manufacturing got some benefits a lot of benefits which are actually uh, we all know that you know the, the surface finish uh, the homogeneity the uh, uh, i would say easy way of uh, reaching the mass production and so on so when people thought about the advantage of sm the subtractive manufacturing they also combined it with the am so they made some of the hybrid am machines uh, which are very uh, today predominantly getting into the mainstream slowly and slowly and these are though expensive because these are very complex system because they are combining both the am characteristic and also in sm characteristic so these machines are very complex to build and complex to operate but the benefits are very huge and there are many company looking at this hybrid am system as well okay another important thing like for example am system which are the parts are made but then after the parts are made there has to be like you know finishing then improving removing support uh, removing porosity and so on so there is a host of machine that are actually supporting the uh, am activities called i would say like supporting machines or allied machines uh, which are actually uh, uh, the next set of segment of machines also developing in this segment because uh, powder recycling or uh, material recycling uh, because one of the key characteristic aim is that you don't waste the material because the what are the material being used actually goes into the part however there are also material being used for support system and these material can be recycled uh, can be mixed with the you know fresh material is also one of the thing it's happening now in the global market okay so next slide so what is the design for aim i'm going to quickly like talk about that about design for aim so design for aim is like uh, thinking predominantly about am based manufacturing not uh, thinking in mind about the uh, making the part in the conventional manufacturing so completely we are thinking about am based manufacturing some of the industry uh, is actually like uh, where like for example you don't need to go for the conventional tooling can directly manufacture one part and that can be directly adopted in the particular industry then you don't need to think about conventional manufacturing at all but then the design must be uh, made according to that for the am machines so there are some of the software like which are like uh, uh, been in the past uh, maybe some of you already probably know so i'm just going to like touch upon that okay let's say um, you need to make a am part so some of this uh, structure which are called the lattice structure so complex shapes matching the human anatomy for especially building a bone or something like that 
so we cannot think like uh, uh, with a normal cat that you could design this thing so the cat should have some of the features where you can actually make such kind of structure so which are mimicking more like a human body and then you can uh, build a complex porous microstructure with the biocompatible material so you need to think on that line because if you also see the uh, how we build a cat model for the human body we normally go to x ray machine or a ct scan machine and those machines work on the different techniques uh, so they get the body dimensions they get the uh, inside data in, in a base scale format dicom file and then we build in the 3d model so they works on voxel techniques so similarly can we equate that uh, like type of a human body anatomy characteristic using the cat uh, you know software yes of course there are development happening uh, which are trying to mimic the human body and so on and these uh, st structures are only built using this kind of software like building with living cells genes and proteins you are able to model that it's not so easy uh, the computer power today and the software capability but there's a lot of investment happening in those line to simulate those kind of things okay so build at a human resolutions like which are very very fine so therefore we need uh, to have the software to take care of all those kind of things which are able to work with the uh, power of the current available computers and computing power and then you're able to get those cad models okay so dfam software if you look at the softwares uh, primarily used for uh, light weighting on aerospace industry or in medical industry uh, where in dental industry where we actually compare the uh, the complementing uh, shape uh, geometry and therefore we can kind of arrive at our geometry let's say for example you make a circular cup like in the zone here so you have to make a hip bone uh, the 3d model and from the hip bone we have to arrive at the shape therefore the hip bone actually the shape according to that we have to cover it up with our cad model then we can customize manufacture it for a particular patient or like this hip bone where this caps come into play or if used for a spine neural surgery according to one spine we must manufacture the part so we have to take the input of the spine ct scan and from that we have to model it and make uh, the uh, am part which are defining or uh, look mimicking like a spine part in reality also in other applications like dental or in the neural area like where you use a cranioplasty this kind of model so i'm just going to briefly cover this because why i'm just uh, stressing on this area is that in india we have about 1.3 billion people and look at the aging population today and also the current our uh, the i'm going to cover some of my slides later uh, there is a huge amount of medical care required in india be it dental be it hip implant be it the spinal care uh be it accidents where people get skull damaged and then you have to replace the skull part with some titanium or a different material there is a huge amount of demand in india because every day we face a situation in india especially uh, due to our population and the sizable market is very huge in terms of the numbers so adoption of am technology with this kind of areas is actually got a growth uh, the huge possibility for uh, investment and growth uh, therefore i'm covering this today Okay, so the DFAM software, some of the very famous popular software is one is, I think maybe some of you know, all is materialized. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that too much. It's just, all, just letting you know, like, uh, materialized has got some of the uh, features that are really enabling the AM manufacturing. The other one is very recently came in, it's called end topology. So, it's, and again, uh, I think uh, this, uh, some of the founders of this uh, software is from IIT Bombay, and uh, they are the founder members, and it's from America. And this software is catching up very quickly in uh, making the AM based design uh, you know very very uh, quicker and faster with uh, uh, new thinking new possibilities okay so there's also another area which actually got this uh, cad modeling technique is called the haptic modeling that is work on a voxel based modeling where the uh, like for example you want to put a foot a you know bone implant to the skull so you have a damaged bone then you have to define you cannot design this using conventional software like proe or cati or ug we need to have some way of uh, making this thing possible like for example like skull cover which must fit exactly because even if you have a few millimeter variation that operation surgery will become a failure so you cannot afford to do that because it has to fit exactly precisely onto the person because it's a critical surgery it's life or death situation for the patient in the operation theater and for even the doctor uh, you cannot do it uh, over and over again it's not productive so it's done the way the model has to be very very accurate so haptic modeling is one area where one can fit the shape exactly to the person's requirement and thereafter it can be manifested with high precision in few microns and then can be fitted onto the person. And it also has to be like, you know, um, uh, you have to rigorous with the surgeon beforehand. So you must know how the design will be made. And it's also expensive to manufacture this part in a different material like titanium. 
So one cannot make it twice or thrice. It has to be made one time and it's perfect. A very expensive process. Okay. So medical AM. So this is actually why I'm covering this today because it's got its own relevance to the Indian scenario. Medical is a huge market for Indian context because of their population, as I said, and also the kind of uh, demands that are available in the market is too huge and is not met by currently available resources today. Okay. So some area of AM used in the uh, basic uses the diagnosis or surgical simulation or customized implant processes or in stereotactic bio model or just for communication between because this is actually basic uh, simple use of the AM. But then where these the real impact is felt is in the implants and processes. Okay, I will cover that. Okay. Uh, basic uh, technology like hobby machines or uh, you know the mid-level machines can be used for surgery simulation or uh, you know surgical guides or something like that it can be used but the prime advantage is actually for the doctor actually it helps them to reduce their time in attending to the patient and there also like helps them to reduce the operation time the patient being in the operating theater it is also increasing the patient confidence you know such kind of models because the patient will know what exactly is going to be done to him and therefore he can give his concurrence before uh, the surgery being uh, taken up and also it helps like in um, uh, documentation of the procedure. With this models, one can actually understand that what's actually happening and if anything goes wrong, then if anything uh, happens, then you can also go back and check. Uh, so why it happened and so on, it can be found out. Yeah. So some of the present application is the, uh, the what's listed here, the craniofacial, maxillofacial, system implant, orthopedic, spinal, cerebrovascular, all this you know, different areas. And some of the high-end areas, even like for conjoint twins, like in some of the, the recent uh, videos we have seen that like, there was a, a Middle East, uh, the babies, they were actually uh, operated upon recently. Um, so pediatric surgery, bone scaffolding, and all this thing can be done. Also bone removal, implant replacement, and cancer based patients, like where the, let's say if they're using a tobacco or something, they have the jawbone to be replaced, it can be done using these techniques. Yeah. So the typical approach is like you have an imaging machine like CT scan or MRI scan or a, let's say X-ray scan and then that is converted into a 3D model. Then you choose a material like it's in plastics, ceramics or metal and according to the ultimate end use on the patient and then we can uh, you know like basically additive manufacture this, post treat it, then send it to the patient for the operation data surgery and so on. So this is typically like so in the imaging there are some specific software being used. This is what actually I like to highlight here. So some of you from uh, faculty and there is a, a good amount of uh, scope for research in this area because to convert an MRI image or a CT scan image or a X-ray image, we need a specific software. Uh, this has to be um, uh, based on uh, quality, the layer thickness of the scanner and the quality of the scanner and how this can be converted to 3D model so that it becomes usable for manufacturing the part as an implant or a prosthetic and that actually is a very important area where one could research upon for Future developments, yeah, and also like for example, like you know, uh, like just do just do like a re recap, like what I said, the dicom slice, what comes out of the machine, and this is basically a raster file. They don't have the, uh, uh, the dimensional values; they are basically raster file. We convert them from raster to vector, and then we make a 3D model out of it. This is a typical process involved. Okay, you see the grayscale image. So these images are like vectorized uh, from raster to vector. After the vector is converted. Then we build that into 3D model and from 3D model, then we design the uh, prosthetics or implants thereafter. Okay. So there are specific software available in the today market and there are also some software like being developed in India and also abroad, where it's focusing on uh, medical modeling because the per se, the AM penetration in medical is too huge, not only in uh, global market, also in India. As I say, the number of machines that are being used uh, by service bureaus or the industry or by the hospitals is increasing every day. Uh, it's also like possibility that research institutes like or the education institutions can actually complement in this area to develop a solution for uh, medical problems. It's possibility. Okay, so these are some of the things. Okay, okay. The list of software currently available in the market. I'm just trying to like name some of them, and maybe uh, you probably know about them or you may want to know them. Okay, uh, so 3D doctor is one software which converts the diagram to 3D, and Mendeleev's Mimics is one other software. Anatomics 3D, Body Care. Uh, there are also some of the open source software like uh, available like ITK, 3D Slicer, also one can use. And these software is today available in the market for one to buy and then uh, make a model from DICOM, the CD scan images to 3D model. And thereafter, you have to model it in a, a different set of software to make a prosthetic or the implant. Okay, 
So those are different stages. Like uh, uh, if there's one in key uh, thing is the slice thickness of the CD scan machine is also play a vital role in getting the quality of the data correct. Okay, this is uh, a very lot of uh, finer information. Okay, what's the opportunity in India? Let's say. So the orthopedic, you all know that knee implant is a very, very common problem for many elderly people who are above age of 55 and get this problem. And there's a lot of elite implant happening in India. And currently all the knee implants are done from a standard implants and they are actually very painful and they don't fit the person very correctly. And many of the people after first surgery, they actually are still immobile, not able to move because of pain in the knee, not fitting their knee implant correctly to the knee. Also the spine and also hip. Hip implant is also a very huge market in India because a lot of the elderly ladies who get into this problem and then they need to be hip replacement surgery has to be done. And there is a huge market in population like India. So in the neurology side, you have a cranioplasty and aneurysm where these two areas where it's 3D printing is very popularly used. So maxillofacial reconstruction, like I said before, if the cancer patient with the jaw has been lost, then you have to make a metal jaw for him to survive. Then also in dental, uh, so endo ortho, I mean uh, implants and then the surgical tools. Then also in the ophthalmic implants, like in eye surgery, also one other area where the AM is finding its uh, own, uh, you know, values uh, for implementation. Okay, so uh, so going forward, I'm going to talk about a little bit about a metal AM and then uh, talk about some of the current trend in metal AM and then the allied equipments. Then I'm going to you know kind of uh, conclude my session. Okay. So you all know about the plastic side, the polymer side, you would already come across uh, many of these developments. Uh, maybe you're part of it, you already have a machine or you already know about the machines. Okay, let's come to the metal. Why metal? Because conventional manufacturing processing. But currently the conventional manufacturing is the way that we are using in the industry to manufacture a part. Okay, because of the labor cost being low and uh, especially in Asian countries, Still, the conventional manufacturing is the way to go, but in the developed country, like in, in America or in Europe, and there are uh, the cost of the labor is very high, so they cannot do the conventional manufacturing. They are adopting the uh, metal AM process. And in fact, one of the company that I visited last, not last year, the previous year before the Corona, uh, they have like several uh, tens of machines in one place for making metal parts. They make thousands of parts like every month. So they even replace the conventional manufacturing machines. So it's kind of trend in the Europe and in American. A market so for a simple geometry one can go conventional way for a, a little complex a conventional still actually okay but if it is a complex geometry the tooling requirement is very very high such kind of complex sometimes even the conventional method is not possible to manufacture like for example like this kind of parts so no conventional method can help to manufacture this kind of parts also you may have already heard about this combining multiple parts make into one part so making simplification of the part geometry it can be done using am so People are able to reduce the number of parts in assembly in aerospace and other areas. So where this AM comes very, very handy. So this actually justifies the use of AM. So the conventional manufacturing will it stop? No, it won't because it will still be there. But when the parts go complex, the conventional AM, which cannot do, or it will be cost of that doing will be very, very high. The time will be very, very high. Then the AM will come into play in replacing the conventional manufacturing this one. But in the years to come, that we could also, if the cost of the AM system come down dramatically in the market, it can also be a threat for the commercial manufacturing because the amount of labor and the complexity involved in getting the block of material, removing the material by commercial programming and so on, AM will be very, very handy to replace that. Okay. The key driver for metal AM, the equipment cost today, the consumable cost, the material cost, then speed of production and the quality of the part, force processing of the part, then the operational simplicity of the software and the software with the DFAM capability. Currently, many of the big companies in the AM manufacturer for metal AM are all focusing on this, you know, varied areas about reducing the system cost, reducing the material cost, improving the speed of production, improving the quality of the part, when uh, simplifying the post-processing cost, you know, like then making the software that anybody can use uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, interface. So where, well, I mean, it's also like it's going to be adding the artificial intelligence in this area because, uh, one, you not to worry about uh, based on the experience that you have to define the parameter. Okay, of course, you can choose a, you know, a particular material and particular technique. Then the software will take care of based on the previous failure of the part. It can actually open the part, build the support system according to the part geometry. And it can happen that the part will come out first time correct. So these are the areas where these companies are investing their money to develop the systems. Okay, so different metal segment is actually like a metal AM segment, design prototype. Uh, mass customization, like, you know, I would say the jewelry is one area, the medical is another area, the molds and tooling, 
I talked about earlier, also on aerospace and defense and uh, multi-metal R&D. Uh, so like adding two materials and making them together. Then low volume production. So low volume production where you need only like less than 500 parts or 1000 parts. So you don't have to go for conventional tooling because they become very uneconomical to make the tooling and make the parts. So making directly by the AM system will be much more economical. Okay. So metal AM so far, the different technologies that are being in the market that you all heard of, like DML is a, like kind of one of the technologies that first came in the market from UIS Germany, then from Sweden, EBM, electron beam melting currently owned by GE. Then the DMD, which is basically a five axis CNC machine where you use a wire or a powder to deposit the powder, deposit the powder or the wire and make a metal part. Then the laser engineering and shaping, lens process, laser cusing, laser metal deposition, LMF, laser metal fusion, rapid plasma deposition. These are all different techniques of uh, you know, making the metal part. Okay, so the current trend today, like what the companies are investing, especially in making the, I mean, the last year, I mean, I was there in the form next, not in 2020, before Corona was in 2019, because last year did not happen. Uh, due to Corona, they had it actually on a, a virtual forum. And uh, so I was there in 2019 with, uh, in Germany. And where these kind of machines made a huge, uh, I think, uh, impact to the audience, especially uh, these technology like uh, again, nanoparticle jetting, which actually used for uh, making uh, very fine parts because the uh, the, the liquid or the powder used is nano size and that can be printed. Then atomic diffusion AM, hybrid SLM, single pass jetting, MIM powder, uh, metal jet, magneto jet, this is Xerox company, which actually bought this wider system from USA. They now have this new technology. Then the, the fantastic thing that I actually learned about this uh, company is called the multi-layer concurrent printing. If some of you are interested in high volume throughput machine. This is one of the machines that's going to challenge the conventional manufacturing. This machine can make uh, probably about 100 kilogram easily in one day. And they talk about the reaching about 1000 kg in one day. So which is really going to be a challenge for the conventional manufacturing because they use a multi-laser, multi-mode way of uh, uh, powder bed fusion. So they can output the metal in a very, very quickly. So which means it's going to be a big challenge for the conventional way of manufacturing. So some of you interested, you can actually have a uh, later on, then you can actually uh, go through this and then you can actually find more information on the same. Because if I'm going to cover each one, it's going to take a lot of time. So I'm going to quickly like run through. So some of the famous metal ion manufacturer, like these are the companies currently in the market, like a name from, they're from uh, Americas, from Germany, from Japan, from China and so on. And interestingly, you also know that there are two important companies in India recently launched their machines. So one company is called the Intech DMLS, which is based in Bangalore. Uh, they have made a machine. Of course, Wipro has already came first and then announced the machine, but I have not seen the machine in the market yet because they had to kind of come out of the machine. So Wipro announced almost, almost two years back that they are uh, uh, bringing the machine in the market, but still actually I have not seen the machine. But Intech DML is already ready with the machine. They are already selling the machine in the market uh, in Bangalore. Another company which is already developing the machine in India is the S Micromatic. So it's the name of the company is called Amaze. So S Micromatic, another Bangalore based company, which are also like in metal AM. Of course, in plastic, there are many, many companies in India manufacturing uh, these kind of small machines. Even we are also making machines. But in the metal area, only like two companies presently, uh, three companies rather, including a pro, they're making this machine in India. But there is a huge amount of demand for uh, such machine manufacturing per se in India, uh, considering the, I said about the medical market and also other market. So there's a big potential for local manufacturer to come up quickly. Yeah, these are the very famous companies. So I'm going to like uh, uh, kind of only cover about one or two, like a very, very, uh, uh, very unique. I'm going to talk about them. And then I go on next. So this are some of the companies like a different uh, machine metal AM system. You can see on the picture. This probably is a desktop system, which actually like uh, based on uh, desktop factory. And this is actually from Italy. Uh, so Sisma, which is directly making in gold. Uh, so some of the jewelry companies using this machine. So directly print in silver and gold. It's becoming popular. And there are many new uh, companies that's coming in. So uh, normally in metal AM, one of the big challenges is the investment and uh, the different types of material that possibly. So the technology is simple, but the price is low and people adopt very quickly. This is all the, some of these machines in this area. The technology is very, very complex and very, very expensive. Then there is a reason for you know not investing on the machine for a long time. But then once they become popular, then maybe we'll reduce the price and then they become much popular. Okay, so today I'm going to like discuss about two companies. Uh, one is about hybrid. I mean, other one about uh, normal conventional AM system. So. 
this company which i was saw in uh, in, uh, in a few of the exhibitions is actually making a big uh, i would say revolution in tuna dye making uh, because it cuts down the dye making time almost literally by uh, more than uh, i think by more than 60 70% so it's actually a big saver for time and all the quality of the dye is very very high okay so medical and metal i talked about it so dental is one area yeah okay so just to give a brief on the the demand in the indian market okay this is 15 crore people in india suffer knee arthritis so which means every year 15 crore people suffer only 4 crore of them need total knee replacement and currently we are currently doing only about 200000 implants currently done in a year in india which means the remaining people they live with the problem okay so when compared to america it's very different so this are some of the statistics so customized implant is made by particular software in fact i want to run through a video but i will be i think having a shortage of time so i'm going to like uh, quickly uh, uh, show you like uh, design of the thing and then uh, later on i just show you how it works yeah so this actually there's a video to play but i think i will uh, skip that hip implant another one where there's a huge demand in india which i mentioned about you earlier uh, there are 100000 implants present done in india currently in america it's more than 300000 but the demand in india is very very high so it must grow in the years to come okay hip implant design software because Sorry? So hip implant software is another area where there is a hip design, hip implant design is made by a software which is there. So sorry, there's a disturbance in the line, sir. We'll yeah, somebody speaking, so I'm just yeah, thinking yeah. they'll ask. They have, somebody okay. has unmuted, sir. So okay. sorry, we'll make it right. Thank you. Okay, so do we have uh, time till 11, right? Yes, sir. We have time to oh. live. Yes, sir. Okay, have. fine. Okay, okay. So the hip implant is something like this. The conventional way of making implant used to be like this, uh, made by the investment casting in the past days. Uh, investment casting where it used to be traditionally manufactured, but with the current AM design software and AM AM manufacturing, these implants look uh, completely different. It's actually customized to the patient, each patient. So it's made like this way. Okay. In the cranioplasty, where I said about many accidents happen every day in India, either two-wheeler or even the uh, four-wheeler, the people's skull get damaged and then uh, they have this problem, uh, the bone are missing from the skull, then it has to be uh, reconstructed and then it's made by titanium. So these are some of the techniques that are different software they used for designing the skull defect and then the same can be made in uh, different materials. These are some of the software like Mimix, 3Doctor, 3Matrix, Scan IP, Medical IP or the software used for this kind of uh, um, design of the replacement. Okay, so once it's done and then it's produced uh, by the titanium or by other materials and then the same is being uh, surgically uh, fixed on to the patient and therefore he's uh, able to live his life normally after this. Yeah, otherwise very uh, dangerous for him. Okay. Okay, one of the biggest thing like in this kind of design is the lattice structure because this can be made like very solid because it will be very heavy then you use a like a structure which is like mimicking like the bone. So this has to be uh, finally designed, uh, designed using the software and then this is actually manufactured again finally by the machine and then there's actually operated on the patient and then fixed. Okay. So dental implant, another big uh, market in India. So I talked about the knee implant, I talked about the hip implant, I talked about the cranioplasty and now I'm talking about the dental implant. One of the biggest driver currently in the market today. So more than 30% of the population have dental restoration needs in India. That means about 400 million people need this dental, you know, at least if somebody loses a tooth and then they have to change to new tooth, whether it's made of ceramic or made of titanium or any other material, cobalt chrome or stainless steel. Okay, so there's a need for the artificial tooth because second time the tooth will not grow and then we have a huge population of people who need this teeth. So the manufacturing teeth was done conventionally by manual method. And this is actually not very effective because the number of people that need this kind of care is very, very high. So how to overcome this using AM techniques? So the cost is based anywhere between 10,000 to three and a half lakhs, depending on the case. So if you imagine the kind of 400 million people and this kind of cost, then one could write a business plan that how viable this to be, you know, meeting the needs of this market. So the, already there are various companies in India doing this thing, but then still not enough. I mean, there are companies based out of uh, uh, Koyamathur, based out of Bangalore, based out of Mumbai, based out of Kerala, based out of Delhi. They're already uh, providing this thing, but still not enough because there's still a demand growing every day. 
And then tell that you have these braces, bridges, crowns, caps, and fillings and repairs and so on. There's a big demand also. So where the AM is actually having a, a big role to play. Okay. So you look at the advantage, traditional processes highly depend on worker efficiency, where 3D printing is actually made 10 times faster. Okay. It takes only three minutes to print a tooth. So reducing the cost a lot. And density is very, very high. So these are very serious cases, these are normal cases. So again, like it's a very specific subject. I think we can uh, uh, currently go faster on this. Okay, now coming to hybrid AM. So what is a hybrid AM? So hybrid AM is the one, I think I will play the video. I hope it will be visible to all of you. Madam, is visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, so DMG Mori is one of the biggest company in hybrid AM where they use the conventional uh, CNC machine to deposit the metal and also machine that later. So they're using a combination of both subtractive manufacturing and additive manufacturing to make a part. Also, it use some time to even to repair the part. Let's say you have a part already and you want to repair the part like an aerospace and any other application where you can just locally deposit the material and then you can finish the particular part. It's possible using this uh, hybrid AM machines. So there are many, many manufacturers. So I just highlighting uh, DMG with Mori because uh, this one machine is, uh, I had actually uh, seen myself personally. There are many, many machines available uh, from Lens to other companies. Uh, there are uh, uh, German companies, American companies, Chinese companies. But I think also PAG is having a program now to develop a similar machine within PAG, especially the robotics department is having a big role to play here. I'm just highlighting that. So I deposit the metal by powder deposition and then it also actually uh, using the CNC process, it also does the milling process at the same time. So the part which comes out of the machine will be usable part directly because the surface finish will be almost as good as the finally useful part and also the quality of the parts will be high, the high accuracy, accuracy and precision. So uh, this is actually straight away useful to the uh, production process. The software plays a crucial role because it also got some uh, built-in system where it also understands if anything goes wrong with the part, it actually able to correct it as the part is being built. This is the beauty of this uh, system because uh, that kind of uh, technology required, you know, because after building the part, you find the part is not, uh, um, as per the dimension, then the whole process actually is a waste of time and waste of money and waste of material. So, it has to be taken care of. while the part is being built, the quality is also maintained. And this is what differentiating some of the uh, high end AM manufacturer like DMG Mori. Okay. So, in the tool and die segment, I also want to show you this is a wonderful machine because I was uh, really shocked to see the machine in uh, uh, it's made by a Japanese company called Mashura. Uh, so usually the tool and die is where they need a very high precision, high quality, like a, a glass finish, surface finish. And this kind of tool is directly made by this machine without much of manual, you know, finishing. Uh, since we are using the hybrid technique, so when the CNC machines the surface, the surface comes very, very uh, glossy, like uh, similar to a mirror finish. And no need to polish, it can be directly absorbed in the tool. This is actually kind of replacing the conventional way of tool making. Also, you can make the internal cooling. But typically, in the injection molding, you need internal cooling to control the cycle time. And this machine can make along with the internal cooling structure. So, the any defect that can come in the injection molding can also be prevented using this uh, design. So the Japanese machine is a pretty expensive machine. If you would like to know the price of the machine, I asked them the minimum investment is about roughly 16 crores for this machine. Because it's like a small factory by itself because one machine can replace the entire tool room in terms of uh, the tool making. Like some of the tools made on this machine, this is out of the machine directly. It's not done any uh, you know, polishing or finishing. Just from the machine, it comes like this, the complexity. So, which means that tooling industry will be challenged to buy this kind of machine in the future because uh, there are so many tool making companies in India and also in Koyamato where uh, the this kind of machines can be a big challenger. Okay, the other allied thing I talked about in the beginning, so the powder removal, recycle, stress relieving, pot removal from build plate, heat treatment, hot isostatic pressing, machining, surface treatment, inspection testing. There's some of the machine available in the market even for the 
um, AM should operate within the nitrogen because uh, to avoid the oxidation of the metal. So we use a nitrogen environment and we use uh, antistatic to remove the antistatic powder removal for uh, you know vacuuming it. Then we use ultrasonic for uh, you know separating the parts. Then we use recycling of powder, powder management like sieving, you know, like removing the um, uh, high micron size particles to smaller size and all that. We use powder management. Also, importantly, we use this two uh, big uh, thing. Like one is the isotratic pressing where we remove the porosity for other space parts and surface treatment because surface of the 3D printed part normally has got a high RA value or I would say very rough part. To make it smooth look like, uh, you know, polished part, there is also like techniques are based on the chemical process. It can also be treated and then it can be made into a very uh, fine uh, polished part. It can be made like that. Okay. So in the hot hydrostatic pressing that we have this uh, kind of a technology where use a pressure vessel, high pressure, high, uh, you know, uh, thing we subject the part made after the thing and then any porosity that is there, actually we are trying to close it. Then to relieve the stress on the part made by the end process, we also have a heat treatment furnace. Uh, which actually can take care of the stress relieving that can be done. These are all some of the areas where one has to also make technology available in addition to the AM machines. Then post build machining normally done by CNC machine, which already you all know. So this is also one area possible. Okay. Conclusion. So though all of you know that AM is growing rapidly across the globe, uh, I mentioned some few areas where so in India, it will make a big impact with the current trend that in especially in medical and other allied areas, there's a huge uh, benefits are being felt. So the AM research will enhance the application at large and fueling growth. So it also may be in the software area, in the hardware area, or in the firmware area, or also in the secondary process. Like for example, I said about allied equipments. So it can actually help to make the AM to grow faster. AM machines and material needs localization through research. So which I mentioned, like you know, many of these uh, company I talked about, they're all based on the developed countries. And if you have to develop these kind of uh, market in India, we have to develop this machine. Already, some of the company doing it in India, uh, both in the lower end and also the higher end. But what we also see that is the materials where we need to really spend a lot of time on developing materials for these AI machines. So these materials find benefits to the local industries, per se, like in India. Okay, and industry economy collaboration is very critical for competing with the global, you know, competition. Like I would say, from China or from other developing countries, they are all very ahead of us in terms of the system manufacturing but if you have to develop this market quickly like we did the cnc machines and other you know manufacturing in am we also have to have an industry academy collaboration very very critical okay and lastly i would say india specific am is important for commercial success of am in india okay so i mentioned about the electric car so though i seen the electric car in 1980s in uh, in ph itself when i was there in the intake exhibition people talked about it but only if you see in the recent past that we are seeing that electric car on the roads, I mean, being commercially viable business model. So we need to also think in AM, like not to think uh, very fancy and very uh, uh, this thing about uh, uh, novel ideas, but then it must be relevant to the people's problem solving and commercially viable, able to make the social impact of the, our population in India. So then this technology can grow faster in India. So with those few words, I would like to conclude. And if any one of you want to contact me in the future, I have an email and I have a mobile where I have a WhatsApp as well. You can reach to me in a time on individual questions because the today given time, as I said to you in the beginning, it's not possible to cover everything, but whatever I could say in the last one hour plus, sharing my And I now welcome your question and answer, then I can answer you and then I can close the session. Participants, uh, any questions you can uh, either unmute and ask or you can move the chat box so that uh, uh, sir can answer your question. So we have a question in the chat box. I'll just. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that. that. It's like, uh, can you repeat the question? What are the most yeah, recent ones in plastic AM? Okay. Uh, yeah, so in plastics, there is. Uh, a lot of developments, of course, because I did not cover that uh, too much uh, because of the uh, my focus was uh, more on the uh, high end area, which make impact in India. In plastic, there are multi um, material, multi color, uh, combining these two and then high speed plastic 3D printing, functional 3D printing, high temperature plastics like peak and uh, PPS, poly polysulfone and also in um, 
you know different material which are actually for high temperature application they are happening in the thing but they are all mostly based on the um normally available 3d printers um, so I, i know that maybe many of you know that area so i try to uh, you know focus on the um, areas where it can make a huge impact on the indian market so plastic per se so many companies making this machines in multi color 3d printing multi material 3d printing like elastomeric like for example making the shoes and so on yeah the next question is about ceramic matrix composites yeah this is an area where is actually currently it's uh, really requires a lot of research ceramic matrix composite is uh, an area of uh, high end research and in fact i am also personally interested in uh, making this possible because ceramics graphene all these areas is uh, currently many companies looking towards uh, investing a large amount of investment to make this possible already there are machines available uh, uh, practically but the ceramics let's say per se like uh, is uh, complex to print uh, in sense that uh, there are two step process so you make a green part and then you do the uh, post uh, you know uh, treatment so this is another area where the uh, two step process we either do by inkjet printing or by a dlp process or lcd process you know we first make a green part and subsequently then we use that to make the actual part by you know uh, by heat treating them later any other questions so shall we conclude that uh, this has been is there any commercial shop to make statue as we use like photos um, yes there are available for uh, making statue like even we have made recently some of them in our company uh, some people here and we have made yeah uh, it's also available in chennai bangalore coimbatore everywhere it's available so if physically you need that you can contact me later i can just uh, connect you with the right prospective person here in our company so any other questions from the participant hello yeah and any other questions from the participant please unmute your mic and ask i think is there any commercial shop to make statue as we like photo sorry Uh, there was a question in the chat sir is there any commercial yeah, yeah sir i said that like uh, yeah we can make this we can do it in coimbatore also there are actually also like such kind of service available in chennai and coimbatore and also bangalore so if uh, uh, he can connect me later on i can help him to make them later on okay sir like uh, we had some uh, network issues like uh, you were not audible to us for a while so i i did not uh, uh, oh, okay fine okay sure So you can always tell the person to reach out to me like either email or WhatsApp. I can always uh, answer them later because uh, already we are over time. So, so um, if there are no questions, participants, I would like to uh, thank uh, um, uh, Prabhahar sir for his wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, I think uh, the way you covered it was exhaustive, and um, so much, yes. we had a lot of information. Yeah. we had a lot of information on whatever topic you took up you gave us a lot of information and uh, of course as you told us this is not the end like uh, you cannot cover all the topics in one hour uh, sure. and uh, yes i think the participants would reach you uh, in case they have any uh, queries on the topics you had dis discussed today uh, it was a very very wonderful presentation a lot of insight into the topic uh, thank you so much for your time sir specifically your time because you are a busy person and we have uh, Caught you in uh, uh, in between. Uh, thank you for your valuable time. Thank you for the presentation, and I hope the participants will get in touch with you in in future. Because they have the WhatsApp number, I will put the same thing in the group also, sir. Sure. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Bye. Uh, Doctor. Everyone will continue uh, discussing things. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Am I audible to you? Hello. Sir, yeah. Okay, sir. Sir, yes. Doctor Prabhahar will get in touch with you, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, I disconnect now. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Sir. Bye. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Sir. Dear participants, we have the next session uh, at 11.30. As usual, I'll request you to join us five minutes beforehand. The next uh, resource person would be uh, KP Karnaharan, Institute Chair Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rapid uh, Manufacturing Laboratory from Indian Institute of uh, Technology, Bombay. Do join us at 11.30. Thank you.